G'day YouTube, down to Bricks here. I've got my top 10 sets of 2018 for you guys today. We're going to do things a little bit differently, similar to what I did last year. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly for Lego for 2018. Now it's going to be quite a lengthy video, so I want you to get nice and comfortable, get relaxed. Before you do get too comfortable though, please hit that thumbs up button, that would be awesome. If you're wondering what's going on here, I've got no power at the moment, so I thought what better thing to do is to sit down and have a chat with you guys. So. And get ready for it. I've got a notepad here. I've had to take notes. There's plenty to get through. We're going to start with the positive and we're going to talk about the good. So, first up, the return of Jurassic World and Harry Potter. How fantastic was that? Who doesn't love dinosaurs? So great to see a return of Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. We It was a very solid wave, some great builds some great dinosaurs we've got a great variety of dinosaurs and i'm very stoked that we're getting more sets in 2019 so let's hope we get more new dinosaurs to add to the collection and harry potter i think you all know by now i'm not a harry potter fanboy but i am a fan of the sets it's a it's really a fantastic world that the, the Harry Potter world. So it's great for Lego. I love seeing those sets and I'm very happy for the thousands and millions of fans of Harry Potter that has made a return in Lego form. What else was good for 2018? Lego ideas. It's just a theme that gets stronger and stronger. I just absolutely love Lego ideas. It's probably one of my favorite themes now. It's just it's just fantastic, isn't it? We just get great builds from this theme. We had four releases this year. We had the Tron Legacy, the Pop-Up Book, the Ship in the Bottle, and Voltron. So there's just something for everybody. So I'm just very happy to see Lego Ideas powering on. Uh, the Roller Coaster, that's the other thing I want to have a chat about. Now, that's a set that... AFOLs have been asking for for years. Now, it didn't make my top 10, and I dare say it's going to be on most people's top 10, and it's really just because it doesn't have that visual appeal for me, but I was just so happy to see a release of that set, a set that fans have always wanted, so it just makes me very happy to see people get that get their wish, get what they really want. I mean, it's kind of like me if they released a UCS ad at. I mean, I'd just be over the moon. So I'm very happy for those fans of the roller coaster. Uh, Vista's wind turbine. Now, that's something that got me really excited. Again, not a set in my top 10. I really can't see how you can put a direct re-release into a top 10. I think it's got to be something new for that year. But it's one of those things... In the, our area, actually have a couple of different wind farms. I just love them. They're just so majestic to me. I, I love seeing them. Our family's just a huge fan of the wind tur turbines. I know in the community, they definitely get a mixed response, but I was very happy to see that set return in Lego form. I haven't picked it up yet, but I will be getting that one. And... City, let's talk about City. So great to see two new trains for City. So that made all the train fans very happy. And also great to see the return of the Arctic sets. I'm a big fan of, of the sub theme of City. It's not always something I collect, but I just think it's a very good idea that Lego do with the City theme. And probably my pick of the City sets for me this year I'll probably have to say the hospital. I thought that was a very good set. So I think City was fairly good this year. And Creator. Creator just keeps rolling off on. I just love the Creator theme. It's just one of those themes. I mean, you just get great pieces. And they quite often just release a set that you just see and go, hmm, I'd love to grab one of those or two of those or four of those and do something with their little sweet shop was was that build for me this year so i got a couple of those just to put a nice little sweet shop together probably my pick of the creator theme would be the pirate roller coaster i thought that was a heap of fun that set 
Superheroes, well, superheroes almost fell into the bad for me this year, especially I think with the DC releases, but the saving grace for superheroes was definitely Marvel with the Infinity War sets. They were fantastic. Definitely saved the day for superheroes in 2018. And I would say out of those sets, uh, the, the play sets, probably the Banatar and the Sanctum Sanctorum sets were my picks there. But yeah, fantastic overall and just fantastic minifigures really. Okay, so we're going to get now into the bad. What did I think was bad for LEGO in 2018? The first thing is Bricktober sets. Every year we get Bricktober sets through Toys R Us. With the demise of Toys R Us, it actually made it very hard to get these sets. It didn't stop them announcing what these sets were, but just very hard to get them, which was very frustrating. I know it definitely would have put Lego on the back foot with Toys R Us closing down, but from the time that they closed down, I just think, and of course they did close down in most countries around the world, not in all countries, so they were available in Toys R Us. I, I know in Canada, I'm not sure where else around the world, but definitely in Canada. But I just think there was enough time for Lego to organize something for themselves and maybe just have them available through shop at home. I think that would have been awesome. Now, they were great minifig packs. I definitely wanted the Marvel pack. I did pick it up through Bricklink, and I'm fairly happy with the price I paid for it, but I just would have liked to see it more available for the fans around the world to be able to get those sets more readily. Um, okay, now this one, this one is... I actually haven't heard many people talk about it. It's something that really annoys me, and it's the release of Betrayal at Cloud City. And it's not the release of that set that's got me annoyed. It's the announcement of a new sub-theme for Star Wars Master Builder Series. It's kind of like when you've got a really confusing situation, the way to clear it up, is to throw in another theme and let's confuse things some more. I know, that's just what it feels like to me. Uh, I, I just don't understand it. I think the horse has bolted. It's far too late to fix the problems that they created in the Ultimate Collector series by having play sets included under that theme. I think, you know, with, with the announcement of a uh, Salt on Hoth as a UCS, and then the Death Star set. I just really think Lego lost the plot with that, and now they're trying to fix it. But like I said, the horse is bolted. It's too late. We don't need another theme. Why can't we have just big play sets? I mean, they're great fun, aren't they? I don't think we need a theme for that. It's a big set, yes, but I don't think it needs its own theme let's just keep UCS what it was and and of course now it's too late so I mean I really don't know what they're to do now but to me a UCS set is a complete build that you can put on display and looks fantastic and as, as much fun as Cloud City might be on display I just don't think it looks that fantastic I mean just, just to look at the Ewok Village that they released. That wasn't released under any theme. It's a fantastic set, everybody loves it, but it didn't need a theme to have it labeled. It was just a great set. I actually think on display, that looks better than, than like Assault on Hoth and Cloud City and the Death Star, personally, but it, it didn't need that extra theme to highlight what it was. It was just a fantastic set. And I think that's all Lego need to rely on. Now, I didn't put Cloud City in my top 10, and it's probably a set that should be in my top 10. It's basically because I haven't picked it up yet. It's 500 Australian dollars. Holy dooly, that is a lot of coin. So I'm waiting for it to come to stores so I can hopefully at least get it at 20% off and pay $400. I think even then it's, you know, it's still too high, but yeah, you know, I'll fork out the 400 bucks for it. But 
to get to actually build that set, I know I'm, I'm going to love it because it's just so many themes, so many little scenes in there to enjoy and build. So upon building it, I know I'm going to love it and that would probably put in my top 10. Everything in my top 10, I actually do own. So that was one of the things I went for this year is that I do actually have it. Now, with the Cloud City, it does again come back to display. I just don't think it's a great display set. And if I'm gonna look at a set that's worth a lot of money for display, I'd have to say the Hogwarts Castle. Now that is $650 Australian, and but you look at that, that is just a fantastic display piece. Now if I was to pick the, between those two sets for display, I would go the Hogwarts Castle every day of the week. I don't collect the Harry Potter theme, so it just makes me think that, you know, I, I just couldn't put the Cloud City on my list. I mean, I'm really trying to convince myself, <laughs> I? but I didn't put either of those sets on my list because I don't intend on picking up the Hogwarts Castle as much as I do think it looks great. I do really love it. If money was, was endless, I would pick it up, but I did leave it off for, for that reason. But yeah, I just, Master Builder Series, I, I don't like it. I just think Lego should have maybe just went, look, we've made some mistakes in the past with what we've announced as UCS, but from now on, we're gonna have it as no more play sets. UCS is just gonna be display, you know, complete sets, complete vehicles that, that fans can put on display. And I think, you know, that probably would have fixed things up a little bit but I'm just really hoping next year, please Lego, please, please, please give us something new in the UCS format. I really want to see something new to put on display. So let's hope that happens in 2019. So that was the bad. What about the ugly? Oh, well, it's just not me. <laughs> uh, the ugly Star Wars buildable figures. They're ugly, aren't they? I think most people think so. And that theme is no more. That line has retired. And I think that's made a lot of people happy. When it first came out, oh, it was definitely on the fence about them. It was definitely General Grievous that dragged me into the line. I have collected it throughout. I do have all of them bar a couple. And I guess I'm a little bit sad it is coming to an end, but I definitely understand why they were disliked so much and probably why they haven't sold too well and that's why they have wrapped it up. But yeah, the billable figures, let's let's put that in the ugly even if you are a fan like me. Uh, Nexo Knights, well, Nexo Knights, that's an interesting theme, isn't it? It's like, it's one of those themes, you either love it or you hate it. And it's another theme that's retired. And I definitely think they went out on the ugly side with some of these sets here. I gotta say, probably not unlike DC, are they? So yeah, DC didn't have a great year. All right, well, that is, that's it for the good, the bad, and the ugly. How are we going for time? Let's uh, flip over the page, and we're gonna get into my top 10. So, I'm gonna have some honorable mentions and I'm gonna talk about something else. So let's talk about the honorable mentions first. Let's spit it out, I should've bought a glass of water. Okay, so it's 75211, the Imperial TIE Fighter for 2018. The best TIE Fighter to date without a doubt. Great detail. Look, I'm not going to talk too much about these sets, but I just thought that was a fantastic set. And that Minden Stormtrooper, whew, that is one awesome minifigure. It's just a shame we didn't get more of them, isn't it? I'd love to see a battle pack of those troopers. And that, that I did actually go out and buy an extra one of those minifigures, and they're not cheap, I have to say, when you go to Bricklink. Okay, so the other one... Now, this, they're, they're both Star Wars sets. 75212, the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. I didn't squeeze that in my list. Oh, I probably should. That They really bumped the price up for that set. So I guess that was one of the things that, that kept it out of my, that helped keep it out of the top 10 for me. 
Uh, again, yeah, it wasn't so long ago we had a Millennium Falcon in, in the minifig scale. Well, not minifig scale, but in the, in the play scale, uh, the, the play sets. We did get the, of course, the UCS Millennium Falcon. So, yeah, I, I think that was probably another reason. I really liked it because of the uniqueness to it with the color scheme and, and the escape pod on the front. I thought that really added to it, and I just wanted to give that one a mention. Now, what I normally do in my top 10 is I like to squeeze in a small set, and it's something that at this time of year that the young ones might see and go, you know, I, I want to ask for something for Christmas, what should I get? And this is a small, and in Lego terms, inexpensive sets to collect, because uh, nothing's really cheap when it comes to Lego. So again, it's three more Star Wars sets. I, I didn't squeeze it in my top 10 this year, but I do want to mention them. And that's 75200 Act 2 Island Training. I thought that was a fantastic set. Great minifigs, great little build. Just had, uh, had a little certain charm about it, so I did really like that set. Probably my favourite is 75208 Yoda's Hut. Now, probably my favourite just because it's original trilogy, and I've, I've got actually sitting right here. The, the minifigs to get a training Luke, or Luke in training, get up, um, you know, the muddy R2, and it's always fantastic to get Yoda. So the minifigs were just superb. And I thought it was a very neat little build too. And it's one of those sets that, <coughs> excuse me, it's one of those sets that, really inspired me to want to keep building and to add to it and i always love when sets do that and and that one really caught my fascination with that so i definitely recommend that one and the last one is 75215 cloud rider swoop bikes and i love the love that movie i thought solo was fantastic i love that scene i love those swoop bikes they just look so cool that it the build techniques in them too were, was really interesting. And you get two bikes, so a lot of playability with it. So for to have something in that price range that's a smaller build, but you actually get a complete vehicle and two of them at that, I think that's awesome. So definitely have to recommend that one as well. But now it is time to get into the top 10. Now, you know I'm a Star Wars fan, so there's going to be Star Wars in here, but of course there's other goodies as well. So what's going to be at number 10? And this was the one, I was going to squeeze this out for one of those smaller sets, but I actually think it's very worthy of a top 10 position because it's just a nice solid build. And that is 75202 Defense of Crate. Now, I just thought this was great. The, the ski speeder is, is just so nice. It's a complete build. It, lots of detail. The actual extra builds you get for the, the trench builds I thought was, were pretty solid as well. There's quite, they're quite substantial for what they are. So overall, I just think that was a very solid set and I just had to include it in my top 10. I had some great minifigs as well. Okay, on to number nine, and now I did have to, I talked about how great it was to see Harry Potter back, and I did have to sneak a set into the top ten, and it's 75955 <laughs> Hogwarts Express. I love trains. This is a fantastic looking train, and it was my favorite pick from the Harry Potter wave, and it's just a great set. I just can't argue with it. Had to make the list at number nine. Number eight. It's another Star Wars set. It is 75221, the Imperial Landing Craft. Now, not a build we see very often from LEGO. We know what they're like with Star Wars. They like to pump out the same sets over and over. This is one we haven't seen for a long time. And it's just a very nice set. A set very hard to come by. It never actually even made it to stores in Australia. Well, not as yet anyway. But it's just such a clean looking build. And it was great build techniques in that too. I had a lot of fun putting that together. Awesome minifigs. The Sand Troopers are my favourite troopers. So 
Great to see more of those. I would love to see four of those in that in that set. I mean, that would have really made it. That probably would have bumped it up the list even higher just to be able to fill it out with troopers. So I think that was a bit of a missed opportunity. But I, I had to include it because it's a fantastic set. Okay, so that was number eight. At number seven, now this one I think is rather underrated. And it is seven, six. 76105 the Hulk Buster. Now it copped a lot of flack this one. I, I expected uh well I, I think people expected it to be a, a fully articulated action figure, but it is in Lego form. Could they have done better? Definitely. I don't think it was what it was supposed to be though. I think this is just a fantastic set to put on display. I love the Hulk Buster suit. It's just it's just something that really fascinates me. I love that suit. If I could afford it, I would get like, I think it's $1,500 or something. The Hot Toys Hulk Buster, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? But yeah, I'm just a big fan. And when you put that set on display with your other Marvel sets, it really does stand out. And that's why I've had to put on my list because it is a fantastic display piece. And it was a very enjoyable build as well. So that made it in at number seven. Okay, number six, we have 10260, the Downtown Diner. I love what Lego's done here. They've changed things up a bit. We're in a new era for modulars, and I like that it's getting a bit of a shake-up. It's definitely not my favorite modular, but I do think it looks fantastic. And again, it inspired me to want to change it up a little bit and do something a little bit different with it, and I thoroughly enjoyed that build process and customizing that set so i i definitely think it's worthy to be in any top 10 list and that is the downtown diner at number six all right now we're getting in to the top five Hoo -hoo -hoo. now we're talking and i'm gonna upset some people with my top five i know it and i don't know i don't think i actually said it at the start but yeah these are my opinions these are my thoughts we're all different yeah who cares let's just enjoy what we enjoy and if you don't like it you don't like it yeah it doesn't really matter it's not going to affect your life at all is it so let's roll on to our top five and that is 10262 james bond aston martin db5 now i said about i own all the sets in my top 10 i've got to be honest this is a set i haven't picked up yet I am really looking forward to it. It's just a little bit expensive for me. I try not to pay full price for Lego sets anymore, so I'm waiting for it to come into the country. It hasn't been selling at stores yet. I've only seen it online, so I'm waiting for that to come to stores so I can pay a little bit less for it, get it on sale perhaps. I'm really looking forward to it. James Bond, who doesn't love James Bond? I'm a huge fan of this this creator theme of, of these vehicles. It's one of those announcements that I look forward to every year. I mean, it's, it, it's up there with the modulars for me. I love waiting for the announcement of the modular. I love waiting for the announcement of what vehicle we're gonna get this year. And of course, top of my list is, you know, what's the UCS set gonna be? Uh, so yeah, it's like right up there for me. I really look forward to that. And I just think they're fantastic display pieces and very enjoyable builds as well. Some of the techniques you get in those builds, just top notch. Okay, so that's at number five. Coming at number four, this is the one that's probably gonna upset most people. 75930, Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Estate. That's a, a nice long name there to wrap your lips around. Now, <laughs> um, I, I guess, Sometimes you just got to come back to the mood gin when you're building. And when I built this set, I absolutely loved it. I just had a fantastic time building it. And it just gives me great memories. So that's why it's so high on my list. I think it displays. So it's one of those sets, I think, that can be appreciated as much as a child or an adult. I mean, as a little play set. Well, it's not little as a playset. It's a stack of fun. Two dinosaurs. Lots of different things you can do with the build itself. You know, change it up quite a lot. Lots of nice detail on the inside. And as an adult, again, on display, it looks fantastic. 
two dinosaurs you can get in and play with. Um, that Indoraptor dinosaur is is one of my favourites. I just think it looks fantastic. I love that dinosaur. And again, it's got me very excited to what we're going to get in 2019. But that was, again, just a fun set. I had to put it high on my list for 2018. It was actually higher than that at times. And this is what I want to say too. With this year, it wasn't actually too difficult for me to actually just pick a top 10. Normally, I have a very long list and it takes a lot of time to whittle it down to a top 10. In past years, I haven't actually been able to do that. I think a couple of years ago, I had a top 15 because I just struggled that much getting it down to 10. But my biggest problem this year was actually picking a number one. Normally, I just know what my number one is from the get-go. I know what it's going to be. But yeah, I just had a little bit of trouble this year and the actual sets in my top three have jumped around quite a lot. The, the um, Lockwood Estate set was actually in my top three at one stage, but my top three sets have jumped around a lot. And I had a lot of trouble actually settling on that. But let's, before we get into, no, we're actually into the top three now, aren't we? So, number three, 75218, the X Wing Starfire. That is a brilliant set. If you're a Star Wars fan, and especially if you're an original trilogy fan, and you haven't got that set, what are you doing? Go out and get it, because it is the best play scale. Let's say play scale, let's call it that. X-Wing that LEGO have ever released. Now, it did have a couple of little issues, I felt, with incorporating the play features like the actual to switch it into attack mode actually think that's the best mechanism lego have done but it did take away from the look a little bit but yeah you gotta look at these sets these sets are for kids they're not for us they're for kids so to have those play features are a must so i don't think you can detract from a set because of the play features that they've incorporated. I mean, yeah, the spring-loaded shooters were, were another thing that I didn't personally like. But overall, that set is fantastic. And I really struggled to see, you know, b besides those play features, how they could have improved on that set. So that's why it's so high on the list. And at one stage, I even had it at number one. But it's... <sighs> It's because my number one, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about it, but we will get to that. But at number two, this was awesome to see. 2-1-3-1-1, Voltron Defender of the Universe. Now, this one was at number one for a while. Whew, that is a great looking set. Now, the Voltron cartoon, it, it doesn't hold the same sort of nostalgia for me back as a kid. I mean, I love watching the cartoon. It hasn't got the same grip for me as, say, like Transformers. I've never gone back and watched the original cartoon like I have with Transformers, but I always loved it as a kid, and I just never thought we would get this set in Lego form, and thanks to Lego Ideas, we have, and it's fantastic. It looks fantastic, and it's definitely worthy for me of the number one, number one, number two spot. But speaking of number one, let's get in to number one. Now, as I said, I had mixed feelings for this set. I've kind of already talked about it earlier, but I've put it at number one just on the set itself. If you take everything away and you just look at the set itself, it had to be number one and that is 75181 the y-wing starfighter ucs set now the only reason i had any negative thoughts on this is just because it was simply a re well not a reissue but we've had it, it it's a re-release we've had it in the past and we've got it again and i'm just really really wanting something new in the ucs line but if you take everything away and you just look at that set for what it is, the detail, 
j just the sheer beauty of it, that's why it's number one for me. I thought the old one was fantastic. They just took that and really ramped it up. The amount of detailing on it, it, it honestly is just a fantastic looking set. I absolutely love it. And as I said, yeah, just as a standalone set, it had to be number one. And I'm just very happy that fans of this theme, the Ultimate Collector Series, if they didn't have the old one, they could pick it up again. So that's another bonus as well. But that is my top 10. And that is my good, the bad, and the ugly. And as I said in the beginning, I would love to hear from you. What is your good? What's your bad? And what's your ugly of 2018? And what's your favorite sets? I'd love to see your top 10. But if you don't want to do that, even just your favorite set or favorite three sets, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to put in the comments, I would love to hear from you. And I'm sure everyone else would love to read your comment as well. Let's all get in and have a good old chat down below in the comments. A big thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I had a lot of fun putting this together and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. And if you haven't, give it a thumbs up. I would love that. But that's all we've got. Again, big thank you for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in the next video, and Merry Christmas to you all.